Hi there. In this demonstration, we see how to conduct a hypothesis test um, about two proportions using the two prop z test. That's the two proportions, and it's a z test. It comes from the z distribution. So um, again, it's not as complicated as all this text would suggest. So I'm going to go right to the demonstration. And this corresponds to chapter um, 9.3 in the workbook. So here we have some data for a, a cold remedy, a popular cold remedy. And what it does is it, it looks at you know, how many people from, from each group who were symptom free in one week. So in the first group, there's 150 people who had a cold and one week later, 117 of them were um, symptom free. And then in the uh, control group, the group that took the placebo, there's 120 in that group. And 90 of them were symptom free one week later. Right. So basically we want to see, um, is this a big enough difference to conclude that there will be a difference in all people who take the remedy? Uh, okay, and this table also actually has the sample proportions right over there, but we actually don't need those to use the, the TI. So, we're going to test the claim that the proportion of all remedy users who are symptom free one week later is greater than the um, pro proportion for the placebo user. So it's a, it's a proportion test. I'm comparing two proportions. And what I'm basically saying here is that the proportion from my first group is greater than the proportion from my second. So the difference, P1 minus P2, is greater than zero. All right? Um, so to get started with the TI, I go over to Stat, Tests, and I scroll down to Do-PropZ test. Again, that's for two proportion, and it's a Z test. So I hit Enter. And it asks me for the number of successes from the first um, trial, set of trials, or the first first sample. So we'll let that be the remedy users. So that's um, 117 out of uh, the sample size of remedy users, which is 150. And for the placebo group, we have 90 successes. 90 people were symptom free after one week and that's from a sample size of 120. All right? And we see this here is a right tail test, P1 minus P2. Um, and by the way, that's the way this test is always set up. We're always assuming P1 or X1 over N1 minus X2 over N2 and um, we're either suggesting that it's greater than zero, less than zero, or not equal to zero. So I want to scroll over to greater than um, and we're ready to go. Oh, I have to hit enter. Good. Hit calculate and it uh, spits out some information, the output here. And it's a z-score of 0.5791. So it's it's, a, it's not a particularly large z-score. And the p-value right here is 0.2812. Again, the p-value is fairly big. Uh, specifically, the p-value, 0.2812, is greater than alpha, which is 0.05. We had a significance level of 0.05 in this problem. So our p-value is, is much greater than alpha. Um, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And what we say is there is not enough data to support our claim um, that the proportion of all remedy users who are symptom free after one week is greater than the proportion for placebo users. And again, if you compare that to the hand calculations and um, getting the standard error, it, this saves a ton of time. And it's really quite simple. Um, the problem is sometimes you're only given these proportions, right, the sample proportions and a sample size. So in order to use the TI, you really have to 
multiply your sample proportion by the sample size and that will give you your x values that you have to put in right because if you go back to the information you have to put in there it requires the number of successes all right it needs x1 n1 and sometimes you're just given p hat and n all right and so you just have to enter some value for x1 and you get that by multiplying p hat times the sample size um, so you might have to calculate that before you enter it, but it, it really saves a lot of time and it's really quite simple. So you're good to go.